Hello guys, welcome back. As you can see, straight into the action this week of some more Gran Turismo 7 daily races from last week on the Suzuka short circuit. An absolutely electric start, starting from 12th at the back as per usual, getting a fantastic run down to the first corner. Already up five positions, bit of door banging from the BMW there, sent them both into the realms and we slot in nicely up into seventh without too much carnage, chasing down the Frenchman and the Spaniard. Um, as you can see, in the Corvette, very girly looking car with a very girly livery as it should have. Barbie livery 69, what more could you ask for on a daily race? Anyway, this was my first race. Obviously, no qualifying time set. Learning as I go along the lines and how to drive this car, which was very tail happy, like most of the cars on the grid. Um, this was one of the better cars on the qualifying list. Only better by the Dodge Viper, really. But Dodge Viper, very good down this last straight that we've just gone by, but the Corvette much better through the windy uh, infield section of the S's and the big final hairpin and obviously the big first corner. So chasing down the Frenchman in the Mazda, still stuck to the back of him, trying to gain on the Spaniard in the BMW M3. Coming through the last corner, crucial to get a big exit here because them cars in a straight line were much quicker than me. As we're both skidding through the final corner, it looks like I've got a good run on him, a bit of slipstream. He's got a slight gap between him and the M3, so I should have a greater slipstream. He's pulled out defensive, as you can see. Send me the long way round. But I braked a bit early for an old switcheroo and a bit of door banging but we're through. Fantastic move as he nearly loses the back end. Great save. Um, if you ask me, obviously a bit biased but looked a clean overtake. Felt it at the time. He left the door open and as Ayrton Senna once said, if there's a gap and you don't go for it, you're no longer a racing driver. So clearly I am a racing driver and as you can see already six temps up on my best lap after being stuck behind the Frenchman. Testing out the track limits to the max there and then running over a traffic cone and killing many spectators in Japan. So in the one minute one, very slow lap to be fair, chasing down the BMW of the Spaniard up onto lap four already. These races absolutely flew by, being such a small track. That fantastic Barbie livery in the Japanese sunshine, absolutely glistening. Can't even see the dent from where I got punted at the start. All over the back of the BMW driver here. It was very frustrating this race. The track was so small and wide, it was literally nowhere to overtake. So, back straight was the best option but I chose to go for a better car on the infield and that became a bit of a pain when you get to this final corner if you don't get a good run out the quicker cars just absolutely blitz down that straight and you cannot keep it with them but doing well here came out the final corner very well side by side with the BMW driver got the slightly better racing line, although he is very tight to me. Slightly ahead as we go into the corner and pushes me very wide. But very clean racing to be fair, very fair, clean racing what we like. As the Frenchman is losing it in the background, I'm looking to make an inside move. Not quite close enough. BMW drivers driving very well. As I go for another move, and just about make it stick as the French driver is all over the shop yet again and up into 5th so started 12th 
two have dropped out now, obviously. Up into fifth. Seven positions gained as the Frenchman's now in the gravel trap, not where you want to be. So, coming on to lap six, up seven positions, and now chasing down the trio of Germans who are a long way up the road to be fair. But as you can see, the German efficiency is working very well. So coming into the first turn then, corner one and corner two, going very deep here and onto the AstroTurf, something you don't want to do with the car with so much oversteer as the Barbie Corvette has. And really allowing the BMW driver back into this race, just as I was telling you, we should be chasing down the trio of Germans. Coming through the S's, going very wide yet again, a yellow flag up ahead, dirty tyres definitely playing a factor here. Coming to the final turn, back onto the main straight, just about managed to hold on to P5 for that lap, but the BMW has got a lot closer than I'd have liked, and coming through to lap seven, to the first turn yet again, hopefully not making the same mistake. Try and balance the car nicely, looks a lot better, took the apex much closer. Too wide yet again, I've not learnt from my mistake, jumping over the AstroTurf, dirty tyres everywhere, forced him slightly wide, tried to defend, coming into the S's, drifting my way through and he is back through. So after two consistent sloppy laps where I should have been chasing down the trio of Germans, we find ourselves behind Tono, the Spaniard in the M3 yet again. So all the hard work we've done, um, we must do again as I'm really on the edge of the limit here. Like I said earlier, it was my first try, so I was testing the waters a bit, trying the track limits, and seemed to be very lucky there on the final corner not to pick up a penalty. But anyway, we'll carry on. Going a bit wider this time. Hopefully, stay off that AstroTurf this time. Much better, I think I did bottle that a little bit, to be fair, it looked a bit slow coming through there through to the S's, still within reach of the M3 driver after that few torrid laps. A lot of oversteer going through there yet again, trying to keep the car as balanced as possible. Drinking game for the amount of times I say balance in this video. Pushing on to the penultimate lap here will be lap number nine, through the final curve. Got a good run, the BMW is twitching there, so he's obviously lost a lot of time on that straight. So hopefully I can capitalise on that. <coughs> right, coming up to the first corner, breaking it the 50 metre, just before the 50 metre bar, uh, board. Trying to keep the car balanced and not run onto the AstroTurf. Lovely job there. Maybe slightly wide, but much better. Half a second down on my fastest lap so clearly wasn't that great but better than running off onto the Astro Tower. Keeping my foot in through the S's just trying to keep that pressure on to force him into a mistake as you've seen it's very easy to do look and much quicker through the middle sector a ten foot on my fastest lap now so coming through to the final turn and I've picked up a stupid penalty, half a second, but I've got a brilliant run on the BMW driver. Coming on to the final lap. The last time we'll be darting down this straight. Can I get a move done? Half a second penalty is going to bite me in the arse, but I've got it now. I've got to deal with it. Sent one up the inside. Lovely move. Couldn't really go anywhere. I was forced so tight. Um, but yeah, we're through. Back up into fifth try and push on now and get far enough ahead that that half second penalty doesn't hinder me 
as we cash it up to a back marker that looks like uh, the other M3 United 2 yeah the French driver is having a torrid time and coming into the final curve for the last time gonna go through the M3 I believe yep straight through him lost the rear end slightly plow down to the line took the penalty so thankfully finishing fifth so moving straight on to the next race qualified this year uh, this time this year obviously qualified this time got myself in the 58s low 58s got in the top 1500 in the world which was quite an achievement for me and started on pole so this one is all about obviously keeping my nerve starting from the front try and blow the competition away and well, finish in first of course starting first finishing first would be ideal clean race should be able to do that trying to make sure I keep tidy around the exits and on the apex of corners a bit wide there letting the RX7 driver stick to the rear end of the barber mobile but that one coming to an end and as you can see a lot more Vipers in this race as I said earlier Corvette was not actually the meta car the Dodge Viper was the most selected that uh, I came across and higher up on the time trial board, qualifying times, whatever you call it. They were definitely the meta car being so quick in a straight line. But through this middle sector I just found this Corvette so much cleaner. Unlike the footage there, which was very laggy. But this RX7 driver, the French driver behind, absolutely driving the nuts off that car. Must be frustrating the hell out of him. The the pink mobile chicane of the Barbie Corvette is still in front of him and he's gone very wide there which has given me the gap that I needed he's killed the spectators with them cones and the Dodge Vipers have got a very good run on him looks like they're going free wide there so oh, you hopefully use this opportunity to pull away a bit as you can see on the top right of the map have actually got quite a good gap and as you can see from that clip the first turn I've already got well over a second gap and currently on my quickest lap so far as you can see in the bottom left I have actually got the fastest lap so far so obviously the pace is there and look at that gap perfect that is exactly what we needed the RX-7 Drava, who obviously looks the quicker of the two, is down into third, and the German in the Dodge Viper in second. There he is, Roman. So, after a four laps in already, looking quite comfortable out at the front. Throwing it into the first turn. Hopefully I haven't gone too deep there. As you've seen in the first race, it's very easy to do. <laughs> but as you can see in the background, the German is actually driving very well. And as this yellow's waved up ahead, the German seems to be taking a little bit of time out of my lap. So, point through the S's nearly three temps down on my fastest lap not ideal barging the cones off the right off the track coming onto the big straight <coughs> 159 uh, not 159 that would be a horrendous lap 59 lap uh, second lap so I'm still consistently in the 59s as I said earlier with the track being so short, it is hard to uh, make leeway on to cars 
quickly, you can't make a massive difference in the lap. So it is all about keeping your cool when you're at the front on a race like this, especially with the track so short. Because you've got to, like I said, chuck it in up, get the apexes, make sure you exit well and I've skipped on a couple of laps here because not a lot of was going on to be honest at the front. So I'll show you an onboard of the lap. I don't play on this POV at all but it uh, shows you how you have to balance the car and how easy it is to lose the rear end with that oversteer. Coming through the S's on and off the throttle all the time trying to keep that car balanced. You can see in the middle on the bottom on the right hand side there is the accelerator line. You can see it up and down like a DJ's deck set up and down all the time till the final corner, flash your way through. As you can see, the German has got the fastest lap, so he's really trying to get that back. Um, <coughs> obviously, everyone on their ho on their screens can see that, so it is a real good indicator to show that you are the fastest guy on track, and it puts people like me who are at the front with him just behind under quite a lot of pressure. So, really aiming to get that fastest lap. It doesn't matter if you win at the end of the day, but it's always nice to have the fastest lap as well. Um, just to pull away the gap, I suppose. So, coming through the S's for the eighth time, about the 28th time in this video. Keeping the car nice and balanced. Through the final corner, no break this time. Nice and wide, try not to get a penalty tucking in nice and tight to the wall, trying to get the quickest run to the line and slightly off the pace there. So the German, although I'm putting in very quick consistent 59s, he's still got the quickest lap and that is one thing you do not want to be doing into the first turn. Getting on the grass, a bit of dirty tyres, sends me wide, chasing down these back markers now as you can see ahead. Balancing the car through the S's, like I've said many times in this video. Try and keep my cool on the penultimate lap. And just before we get to Dunlop, which is now, come through the final hairpin, cut off the corner through to the triangle, which is normally a very deadly chicane back onto the home straight and we are on our way to the last lap. Took it a bit wider to get an extra bit of speed. Come back onto this racing camp to get a real feel of how close Roman actually caught up to me in the end. Going for the fastest lap on the last lap. Took the first turn much quicker there with ninth place just ahead of me, tenth up, nearly two tenths up, through the S's, absolutely flying, you can see the pace difference, Roman sticking with me like a bloody fly around, you know what. Coming up to the penultimate turn, final corner, got a massive gap between me and Roman now. The back mark up, not really paying attention to the blues, but we got that win. Another win on GT7 this year in the Barbie reveal. Can't really ask for much more other than the fastest lap. But we get another win under our belt in the pink Barbie reveal. Thanks again for watching, guys.